Welcome back to the Developer Landscape series. If you're picking up this series in the middle, you can clone the examples from this series from GitHub. To do this, open the bit.ly link on your screen in your browser, and this will take you to the GitHub repo. You can clone the code by clicking on the clone or download button. The GitHub URL that you see may start with HTTPS, and that's fine. Just copy the contents of that to your clipboard. In your terminal, change to a working directory. I like to put all my source code in a directory called src. Type git clone and paste the GitHub URL. Finally, hit enter. And now to the show. So what are IDEs and code editors? IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. And so that's the number one difference between code editors and IDEs, integration of the tooling into one meta tool. That typically includes things like templates, debuggers, a console, and setting up different runtime environments, profiling, refactoring, and, you know, really the list goes on. Many times they also include the ability to manage large projects with interdependencies. This can be very helpful, but also means they tend to include project-related files that aren't source code in your project directory. You'll want to make sure you include those in your git ignore file. We'll cover that a little bit later. Many developers like IDEs, and they can be the right tool for the right task. Examples of these tools are PyCharm, Eclipse, Xcode, and of course, uh, Visual Studio. Code editors tend to focus at their core on, well, you guessed it, editing code. Now, you'll find that many developers will add plugins to their code editors in order to enhance the experience. So it gets a little blurry, but generally speaking, they are different in that code editors out of the box experience is for editing code only. Examples of code editors include VI and Vim, Emacs, Atom, and Visual Studio Code. Okay, let's take a look. Here's PyCharm. As you might have guessed by the name, PyCharm started out as a Python programming environment, but it's expanded from those roots. As mentioned earlier, because PyCharm is an IDE, it includes a project folder called .idea. Make sure you add that to your git ignore file. I'm adding it now. Let's explore some of the integration that's in PyCharm. As you'll see, the run and debug features are probably the most obvious um, components in an IDE. I'm opening the JSON parse example, and now I'm going to click on run and then run JSON parse example. Check out how the console actually just outputted the results of your script. Uh, this will be a different experience in a code editor. Now let's look at the integrated debugging features. In the same file, set a breakpoint on line 4. Now click on Run and choose Debug, JSON Parse Example. You'll notice that it stops on line 4, and so now you can hover over the variables and you know, if you look down at the debugger, there's a bunch of data that you can click open in order to see details of the variables that are in memory and so on. If you move over to the debugger controls, you can also step over or into functions and inspect the running program. Here's Adam. Uh, you can see that it has some similarities, um, but the differences should become apparent as we look for features that we saw in PyCharm. So um, open the JSON parse example, the same file that we had open in PyCharm. And uh, note that there isn't a run option in any of the menus. And that's because this is not an IDE. So instead, you need to open a terminal window to execute your code. Uh, you also note that there isn't a debug option either. The way around this is that you can add console logging, for example, in your application so that you can inspect variables. 
And finally, here's Visual Studio Code. Again, open the JSON parse example. Now, Visual Studio Code is similar to Atom in many ways, but it also has lightweight IDE features. And so it's sort of a middle ground type of I, uh, code editor. Um, it includes things like code completion, debugging, linting, and so on. And so you'll notice the debug option up in the menu. And if you're doing some Node.js programming, uh, this may be a good option because it has very good JavaScript debugging support. You may think, okay, how do I choose? And look at all that cool stuff that PyCharm does. Um, I'm not going to make any specific recommendations here, more that we're just giving you exposure to the different options. Um, and again, these aren't all the options. So PyCharm may be useful if you're using Python, for example, but it does support other languages. And in the case of other languages, say JavaScript or Go or C Sharp, you might want to choose a different editor because it has plugins or features that are more tailored to that language. I hope that this session has given you a better appreciation for the differences and similarities between IDEs and code editors. Thanks for watching! Alright, we've come to the end of another episode of the Developer Landscape series. If you want to try out some of your new skills, head over to Cisco DevNet at developer.cisco.com. You can also stay in touch with me or ask questions on Twitter at A-R-O-A-C-H. Also follow DevNet on Twitter at C-I-S-C-O-D-E-V-N-E-T to keep up with our latest adventures. Thanks for watching!